So let's talk about the Mazda MX-30 eSkyActiv REV. This car sees the return of the iconic rotary engine, but uniquely as an electric generator to charge the battery rather than directly driving the wheels, bringing rotary technology into the age of electrification. Rotational movement is one of the best ways to generate electricity. Think about hydroelectric, nuclear or wind turbines, which all generate power from a rotational movement, which is a very efficient, compact and versatile way to convert kinetic energy into electricity. Mazda is the only automotive company that has perfected the rotary engine and continues to develop the technology today. The rotary engine was developed by Felix Wankel in 1934 as a further development of his rotary compressor. This design was initially adopted by NSU, but they ran into multiple problems with oil flow, engine cooling and bearing seizures, and so they didn't launch their rotary-powered NSU Spider sports car until some 30 years later in 1963. Many companies bought licenses for the rotary engine, but they all abandoned development by the mid-1970s. Well, all apart from one, and that's Mazda. We started to develop the rotary engine in 1961, and by 1967 had solved many of the problems experienced by other developers, such as apex sealwear and overheating, launching the stunning Cosmo 110S. More rotary-powered cars followed. The R100, the rotary pickup truck, the rotary-powered bus, the RX2, RX3, RX4 and the stunning RX7, culminating in the RX8 and the beautiful RX Vision design concept car, and to date we have produced close to 2 million rotary-engined cars. The first rotary engine was the 40A, a single rotor engine, and there have been 21 variations of rotary engines since, as engineers have refined and improved the efficiency and performance. The rotary engine also appeared in multiple design concepts, demonstrating the desire by Mazda to continue to develop and produce this unique powertrain. There are many benefits of the rotary engine. It's a rotating engine, so it's smoother than a reciprocating engine. It's smaller than an auto cycle engine, so it's lighter and can be placed in exactly the right place in the car to give perfect 50-50 weight distribution. It's modular so extra rotors can be added to increase power, and it's powerful in relation to its size. But it was with the Cosmo that Mazda first realised the potential for international endurance motorsport success, with the rotary engine at the Marathon de la Route in 1968, when a Mazda Cosmo finished fourth following 82 hours of racing. This sowed the seed for endurance racing and further success came with the Daytona 24-hour race in the GTU class in 1979. In 1980, Wynn Percy won the British Touring Car Championship in an RX-7 and repeated the win in 1981, the same year that an RX-7 won the 24 hours at Spa. In 1982, Mazda entered Le Mans with an RX-7 for the first time and was rewarded with a 14th place and by 1990 the RX-7 had become the first in history to reach a total of 100 wins in the IMSA race series by a single car model. Then in 1991 came one of the most famous victories in the 100 years of Le Mans. Mazda became the first Japanese manufacturer to win the gruelling 24-hour race and the first and to this day the only using a rotary engine. This very car, the Mazda 787B, is one of the most iconic cars associated with Le Mans. The REV is powered by a rotary 830cc engine producing 75 horsepower, taking the engine back to its roots as a single rotor unit. This is the first rotary to have direct injection, which improves efficiency by up to 25%. It's also the first to have an exhaust gas regulator, which reduces combustion chamber temperatures and plasma spray coatings on the rotor housing to reduce friction, all contributing to improved efficiency. The rotary engine has many fans around the world, one of which is Jamie Turner, visiting professor of powertrains at Bath University and professor of powertrains from the King Abdullah University of Science and Technology in Saudi Arabia. And he is best placed to explain why the rotary engine is ideal as a power unit in a plug-in hybrid and how e-fuels could make this the ideal combination. The uh, Wankel rotary engine makes an exceptionally good um, motive power device for uh, a, range, a range extender. Uh, the reason for that is that uh, range extended electric vehicles, the one thing they really need from their engines 
is lightweight when they're installed in the vehicle. That's because you're really aiming to do the vast majority of your miles on electric propulsion. The engine itself is carried all the time, and so therefore its mass, when it's installed, uh, has a big effect on the electric range. So making it as light as possible is a very, very, uh, a very, very uh, keen attribute to go for. The battery can be much smaller than uh, you need for a battery electric vehicle. And there are two things from that. So if you imagine if you had 120 kilowatt hours of, of battery that you could make, if you could chop all that into four batteries to put into range extender vehicles, you'd actually use those kilowatt hours of battery much more efficiently um, because people would not be worried about running out of charge in the battery because the range extender would come on. So therefore, from a uh, planet-wide uh, point of view, that's a very good thing. So the vehicles get a lot lighter, all the resources that were used in the battery uh, are used much harder, and we don't need to make batteries that are anywhere near as big as people want in a pure battery electric vehicle. With the right match of battery size uh, and the right efficiency from the engine that's not too heavy, and the right usage profile can really help us with an argument for, for e-fuels in the future. We launched the Mazda MX-30 in 2021 and customers love the way the car drives, scoring highly against competitors in the new car buyer survey for ease of driving, level of equipment and its appearance, along with engine design. This model is absolutely perfect for the majority of the population that have relatively modest daily use and wouldn't benefit from transporting a large and very heavy battery around. When looking at our digital service record data, which carefully tracks actual car usage, we can see that the average daily journey for Mazda customers is around 26 miles. So the range of the MX-30 BEV really does fit into most customers' lifestyles. And it's not just us saying this. The UK government statistics show national weekly average mileage is around 100 miles, with our own digital service record data showing MX-30 owners average 130 miles per week. This means many drivers would only need to charge once a week. But for customers who have occasional need for much longer journeys, the rotary Mazda MX-30 version is perfect. In the REV, the electric-only driving range is 53 miles from the 17.8 kilowatt battery, meaning the electric power should be more than sufficient for the majority of journeys. But for those longer drive requirements, there's a 50 litre petrol tank to keep the battery charged for another 350 miles, while a WLTP CO2 output of just 21 grams per kilometre ensures class leading environmental performance. The REV is fundamentally different from other PHEVs. The car always drives from the battery, so that the BEV driving experience that customers love is always present in the MX30 REV. As the rotary engine does not drive the wheels, you also avoid PHEV powertrain shunt and the intervention of the internal combustion engine is not physically intrusive as it is in many other PHEVs. The MX-30 eSky Active REV has three drive modes for every driving need, EV mode, normal mode and charge mode. When set in normal mode and the battery has sufficient charge, the REV will drive in predominantly pure electric mode until the battery's state of charge drops below a predefined level set from factory at 43% and then the rotary generator will be activated to maintain or increase this level of charge. When in normal mode, if the driver acquires more power than the battery alone can supply, such as under hard acceleration, then the rotary generator will activate to increase the power delivery. Drivers can turn on EV mode when just electric power is required and the car will remain in EV mode until the battery is just above empty, rather than the engine activating once the state of charge drops to 43% as it does in normal mode. However, a safety feature will activate the rotary generator if the power required is greater than the battery alone can deliver, such as under hard acceleration to avoid a conflict with another car. Charge mode can be used to ensure the battery is sufficiently charged if EV mode is required at a later stage of the drive. And the driver can set the amount of battery charge they want to reserve between 20 and 100%. In all these drive modes, the generator will activate when the battery charge drops below the specified reserve level and maintain that level of charge. Once above the set level, the car will run in normal mode. 
When we launched the MX-30 BEV in 2020, we ensured that it would deliver a driving experience that was comfortable, familiar and fun. The MX-30 eSky Active REV uses the same drive control technology as we used in the MX-30 BEV, which means this new model delivers the same great driving experience. The MX-30 REV is compatible with single-phase and three-phase AC charging, as well as fast DC charging methods, which is unique for a PHEV as most on the market today do not work with fast chargers. It can also be connected to Type 2 and CCS charging systems, maximising its capacity to recharge at the greatest number of available locations. Using a 36 kW fast charging unit, the battery can be charged from 20 to 80% in approximately 25 minutes. With three-phase 11 kW normal AC charging, the battery can be refilled in approximately 50 minutes, and with one-phase 7.2 kW normal AC, charging will take approximately an hour and 30 minutes. The MX-30 REV has the same specification levels as the BEV, starting with the Prime line, then Exclusive line, and the range topping Mercato. The range is topped by the Edition R. The R moniker stands for Return, and a very limited number of Edition R models will come to the UK to celebrate the return of the rotary engine, and have already sold out. The maroon rouge colour accent pays homage to the roof colour of the Mazda R360, Mazda's first passenger car.